Welcome back to Let's Play Darkest Dungeon. I'm your host, Time Pants, and today I know that a lot of you said, hey, do your recording off screen where we want to skip all this stuff. And I don't blame you, I do also. But here's the thing. Here's what happened was, uh, no, I, I didn't do any other recording after the last quote unquote ex expedition went up. So, uh, yeah, I don't have anything else, <laughs> anything else to show today. I am, after we finish here, I am going to go ahead and record a bit more so we can cut out a bit of this nonsense. Not all of it, unfortunately, but a bit. So, we will be able to sort of jump ahead and, uh, yeah, skip some of the, the more boring parts. I'll give you kind of a reader's digest version of the trip to the top for these and a couple other characters. I do have most of the day off on Thursday, so that's what I'm really going to that's that's why I'm really planning on getting a, a lot of the the leveling up done. So, uh, I hope you I hope you'll humor me while I put up a bit of the less exciting stuff here just for today. I Feel like a boxer who just got mauled in the ring. Just like, just cut me. I can get him. Back. Cut me. Put me back what in, Doc. I can take him. And, the and of our noble line. And like, uh, no, dude, the fight ended two hours ago. You're in the locker room. No, I can get him, Doc. <laughs> what? He's running away. What a coward. And no, I. I mean, I got savaged pretty badly here in the uh, the last episode. It's, Destroy them. Or... It's a bit, it's a bit embarrassing. I did get some valuable information here. Actually, should have attacked this one so I could. Whoops. All right. Well, this is not a fantastic start. But yeah, I actually got some valuable advice here. I actually did not know just precisely how to. All right, you can't kill the lights. Yeah, I didn't know just precisely how to make sure that I. Maintain the offensive. I made the uh, made the most out of this. Uh, what is it here? Yeah, this battlefield medicine. So I do appreciate. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate the commenter who said, "Hey, idiot! Here's you don't have to have your plague doctor heal herself with battlefield medicine. She always gets the benefit." Like seriously, thank you for that. I. I honestly clearly did not know. So that is, that's very handy, very useful information. I really do appreciate it. And so right now, how do we want to do this? Actually, As the theme whoops. Falls, <laughs> that was like, I thought, okay, we'll use hands from the abyss here. So we can avoid the, uh, yeah, avoid killing an enemy and have the ability to actually do a, a holy lance here. Maybe, maybe I have the wrong idea. So I'll, uh, I'll revise my my battle strategy here. So Press I was Give them no just thinking today about things that I miss. You know, I'm back here in the United States. This I, I'm very happy Push to be here. To tasks end. I feel like, like I, I was kind of at a point. I was kind of at a point in my professional career, and it's weird to say that at 31, and you know, you're. I'm not a CEO, right? I'm not. I'm not like some upstart billionaire, upstart startup. I'm not a venture capitalist. I'm not. I'm not rubbing elbows with the big wigs on Wall Street, uh, mostly because I use expressions like rubbing elbows and big wigs. But yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly, yeah, I'm not exactly the kind of person who has like a career that really warrants much consideration, I guess. But But, yeah, I, I was kind of at the, the point in my career at my previous job where 
it was time to move on. Like there was really just not much more that I could, not much more that I could do. I wasn't really, wasn't really on a path for advancement that I really could say that I felt content with. Basically, I was at a point in my, again, point in my career where somebody more or less had to die before I was gonna get like promoted or get another, uh, get another real opportunity worth uh, worth mentioning. So I came back and you know started my new job. Triumphant. Don't regret it, but what do I miss? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something. The thing that I miss the most is it the food, is it the sights, the fact that Japan is probably the most photogenic country on earth? Well, you know, that's nice, but no. Uh, the thing that I miss the most about Japan is the heated toilets. Oh my goodness, you have not experienced luxury until you have sat upon the throne of the gods and taken a duke, especially if it's the middle of winter, on... Hmm. I think we shovel this one, we save our key. That's far too many shovels. And yeah, you have not lived until you have sat upon the heated throne of the gods and <laughs> yes, squeezed one out with just, yeah, perfectly warmed, perfectly heated, very inviting, I will say. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just fantastic. And you just don't get that experience in the United States. You know, a lot of people talk about, or it's kind of a running joke, I guess, even in, uh, yeah, like American movies and TV. When you make it, you get to use the presidential toilet, right? You get to use the presidential bathroom at the office. Well, that is nice, but that does not hold a candle to what, yeah, to the, the real experience there of just being in, uh, yeah, being in Japan and getting to, to actually use one of those heated toilets. Oh, it's beautiful. So, I will say this, you know, America, we have, we have our, our, our own culture of decadence, our culture of excess, but truly, truly, nobody really gets to experience the, ex the extremes of the de I mean, I had, like, it was on the map, and I just walked right through it. Holy crap. By his own no, eyes. nobody really gets to experience the extremes of the defecatory spectrum quite like the Japanese, and I mean that sincerely. Like, here's the other thing. If the word squatters, if that term only has a meaning to you as, like, the people who you know, find, hmm, the, yeah, the people who move into, like, an abandoned home and just, like, set up camp there, if that's the only meaning the word squatters has to you, my friend, you live a better life than I. Here, here's what a squatter is, for those of you who don't know. Squatter is a term of endearment that uh, this civilized people of the world who have visited Japan have bestowed upon that particular uh, that particular monstrosity a crime against humanity if you will or at least the posterior of humanity these you'll typically find this sort of yeah this sort of toilet at train stations places that are you know perhaps outdoors Something like, yeah, if you if you go to a, a park or something like, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Yeah, yeah, if you go to a like a sightseeing destination and running water is not like immediately available, chances are you're gonna you're gonna take a duke on a squatter, and basically what it is is it is more or less a hole in the ground. Like you don't actually sit; your posterior rests against nothing, and if you are lucky, you will get to be, like, you'll get to have, like, a pole or something sitting in front of you, taunting you, 
to yeah to hang on for dear life. It's basically like a stripper pole for E. coli, if I can yeah, if I can compare it to anything. Basically, yeah, you you hold on to this and use it to sort of maintain your balance while you try desperately not to fall in. And I'm telling you something right now. These things are so cruelly mistreated. The ground quakes. Especially in public places like train stations. You go in there and it's like English so, horrors. It's you would think Got somebody took driven into the mud. Took a shit there like in the middle of an earthquake. It is it's a tragedy. Man, it is it's just horrible to look at and watch and consider that it even exists. It's the most awful thing imaginable. Um, I mean, people just do whatever. Like, clearly, it's... You have not experienced the depths of human apathy for, like... Yeah, the, the depths of human apathy for, like like appliances or I guess it's not an appliance but like you know household items you know they'll just they'll just go in there and let the ship fall where it may it does not matter man they nobody who uses a squatter cares because clearly everyone's just trying to get in and get out like as fast as they possibly can I don't blame them I'm the same way. Prodigious size alone. I mean, I only used a squatter maybe three times the entire time I was in Japan. Regretted all three. But none quite as much as the day that I went and found that there wasn't any toilet paper. I was on my way to work. And this is another thing that you don't or wouldn't know about Japan unless you had been there. You know, there's, I think this attitude that we as foreigners, as, you know, people who don't really grow up, who didn't grow up in Japan, don't know what that's like. There's this stereotype, and perhaps it's unfair, that it's an extremely sterile, hygienic society. I mean, for instance, they bow, they don't shake hands. I mean, they do shake hands, um, but it's, it's customary to bow as a greeting or as a sign of respect, right? Um, but I think I figured out why. And it's because, like, Success so clearly and again, you. you know, this is going to sound like I'm or just absolutely ripping on Japan. I'm not. I'm seriously, like I said, I, I enjoyed my time there. But a lot of the restrooms there, not all, but a lot of the public restrooms there don't have soap. Even the cold stone so, seems bent on preventing passage. No toilet paper. And no soap. In the public restroom. I don't think I need to go on. Like I said, on my way to work, in my work clothes. Well struck. It was on that day that I truly plumbed the depths of human misery and realized just how tenuous the grip we have on civilization really is. So, uh, something to consider if you ever visit Japan. Uh, bring Purell. It will not be wasted space in your bag. But that said, if you have opportunity to do so, you should go. It's... It is an experience. Don't let my negativity... Uh, you know, don't let my negativity sort of taint this, because... Killer. As I said, you know, there's something else to look forward to also. That's heated toilets, so... Anyway, that's my Japan story. Uh, there will be... There will be less of this in the future, because we are going to... Yikes, guys, get it together here. Good gravy. All right, so we are going to take some time off. I am going to all my life I could a bit, uh, do a bit of grinding here on my, my lonesome. Mind. 
And when we uh, when we come back, my uh, video tomorrow, you're gonna see. Hopefully, characters level five, level six. If not, at the very least, you're gonna see tougher dungeons than us just romping on a level level one, you know, novice level. So, I just want to thank everybody for watching and stay tuned. We're gonna these guys are coming up. They're gonna be they're gonna be fine. Anyway. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening to my toilet story. 31 years old, talking about poop on the internet.